Leveling in Vanilla WoW was very unique when compared to how we do things in the modern game. You could say you that! See, leveling in Vanilla WoW was the game. So yep. you spent a long sure time Sure fucking doing was. It. And MMOs were just played differently back then. So as I progress through this video, you will notice a lot more differences than similarities to yep. how questing is done today. First off, your character was weak. Very weak for the first 1 to 10 levels. Rogues, for example, didn't start off with dual wielding. The iconic ability of a class who is all about attacking quickly oh, with really? two small weapons could only run one weapon for the first 10 levels. Also, that Damn. one weapon was a dagger, because you couldn't learn how to use other weapons until level 10. Damn, and I daggers, didn't even know that! Back then, and even today, did what not in the very fuck? hard. They're meant to attack fast and quickly, what in the but not fuck? do a lot of high-end damage. God which damn. is fine, if it wasn't for the fact that the main ability early rogues could use was Sinister Strike, an ability that wants the slowest, highest hitting weapon you have in your main hand. Hunters started off with no yep. ranged attacks at level 1, and instead had Raptor Strike. Raptor Strike was a melee ability that added bonus damage to your next melee attack and wasn't very good. Also, hunters started off with a weak one-handed weapon too. Because you were fucking di you were fucking garbage. That's the thing is you would build you would build this up and y you started off in the game and you you were shitty. You were fucking shitty. Everything about your character sucked dick. Like everything about it was bad. Uh, watch Fer Ferris. Do you want me to watch your video after this? Okay, hopefully I won't have to because the servers will be up, but the odds are I probably will. Um, yeah, that was a, it was a complete fucking terrible thing. And so it's very true. Okay, let's go. But at least it was better than a dagger. Early hunters could easily be mistaken as a melee class if you didn't know any better because of just how much melee damage you had to do. The ability to auto shoot while moving wasn't added to the game until Cataclysm. So you had to stutter step auto shoot kite every mob if you wanted to use your ranged weapon. Until you got your pet at level 10 of course. Now let's look at the quests themselves for a bit. Lots and lots of quests where of the go collect this item from mobs that has a small chance to drop variety. Mm -hmm. This was to force players to have to kill a ton of mobs all the time for nearly half of the quests you did. Okay. That way, you'd get that sweet monster kill experience, which was crucial to leveling up in an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. Most vanilla quest guides would even tell you to kill as many mobs as you could, on your way to the next quest giver and on your way to quests. Gather quests all had really long cast times. If you got a rare quest that wasn't telling you to go commit mass genocide on wolves to get four paws, you'd sometimes get lucky and have a nice and easy gather quest. Although, these weren't really all that easy. Most of the things you had to collect had moderately long respawn timers. So if there were other players in the area, that made them take a lot longer to do. Most items were swarming with mobs that had to be cleared out first. Most of them were very far apart from each other and forced you to have to hunt them down for a long time. And also, they would take about 5 seconds on average to collect each one. Same with gathering herbs and mining, about 5 second cast times for each, with the chance of failing and having to do it again. Everything in Vanilla WoW had incredibly long cast times to collect, whereas today it's almost instant, if not collected in 2 seconds at the most. And for yep. quests, that necessarily wasn't just about going out and killing or collecting stuff, you had to read them very carefully to make sure you understood what to do. In oh, that's true. That's true. That's whenever I really fucked up. Like, you guys ever read a quest, and it's like four paragraphs, and you read the first, third, and fourth paragraph, and it's like, okay, I go here, and then the second paragraph says, first go here? Like, I don't know how many times it's fucking happened. Except for in Vanilla WoW, Whenever that happens, you don't waste like, oh shit, I've got to go use my my 14th Dalaran Hearthstone or take one of my eight different portal items over to, you know, four of these other continents that'll take me over to the area within 10 seconds. No, you just wasted 35 fucking minutes. 
You just wasted 35 fucking minutes just for that one goddamn motherfucking thing. Information was kind of sparse back then, so you had to pay close attention to the quest text to understand what exactly you needed to do. Because obviously, there were no quest markers in-game. Items didn't glow if you needed them, and mobs didn't even tell you if they dropped anything you needed for your quest nope. either. Killing mobs was hard. Your character was weak. Even after hitting level 10, mobs were powerful. On average, it might take you 20 to 30 seconds to kill one normal, non-elite, level-appropriate mob. Fighting two at once was nearly death, but could be handled if you popped cooldowns or if your class had a way to handle it. Good AoE and vanilla WoW was the exception, not the norm. So, not many classes could deal with two mobs at once on a regular basis, and getting three mobs was almost guaranteed death unless you had a way to leave combat or escape. Killing large groups That's of true. mobs took it's planning very fucking and strategy annoying too. I hated because it they so were much, usually man. clumped up together and you didn't want to accidentally pull more than one mob at a Most time. Most annoying motherfucking also, bullshit mobs there is. Spawning on top of you usually also meant death. And going into a cave for a quest item usually yep. meant that the mobs at the entrance would respawn before you were finished. Yep. Because of how long it took to kill everything. And it was most times easier to just die and res outside rather than deal with trying to re-clear it, as you were probably going to die anyway. Combat was a little harder too. Today we have inherent hit chance and expertise, but in vanilla WoW, weapon based classes had to deal with parries, dodges, glancing blows, blocks, all mobs could block, not just mobs with shields, and misses. Half of the time you attacked a mob on a melee character, you would miss the attack in some way, shape, or form. Because getting the stats needed to attack... Dodge. Overpower. Miss. That's like the perfect fucking trifecta for why warriors have rage as a resource. That, that's why warriors have rage right there. That one fucking thing through those was on gear that you had no control over while leveling. But luckily, casters and hunters didn't have to deal with this as much. In vanilla, the only thing a ranged attack could do was miss, and maybe be blocked. Plus, spells only had to worry we'll about we'll, we'll get, we'll get BFA now. resisted. But because we'll you that. were so weak, gear felt better and more meaningful. That's not why it felt better. The reason why it felt better is because literally back in vanilla WoW, over half of your questing, over half of your character's experience was obtained through killing mobs. In retail WoW, 20% of it is killing mobs, 80% of it is questing. Whereas in B vanilla, 20% of 20% of it is questing, and 80% of it is killing mobs. So you're spending all of your fucking time going mobs. So if you get an upgrade, it matters a lot more because you spend way more time killing mobs. And you know, people might not remember this or think this is true, but that's absolutely the fucking case. That's how it's always been, man. Finding a treasure chest in vanilla WoW was infinitely more valuable than finding one in the more modern versions of the game, as it was almost guaranteed to have a green item in it. Getting a green item that you could use and had stats that you needed yep. just felt better because of how hard everything was and how rare good pieces of gear Well, how were. meaningful it was, yeah. Being so weak also forced cooperation. One spirit. Quests with hard to kill bosses or lots of ads never required died. a group. And since everyone was used to dying to more than two mobs at once, they were much more willing to join groups and look for them in kind. Yeah. Speaking of boss you mobs, make friends. Vanilla WoW had this really unfair way of making boss-like mobs harder to kill. Higher level. You see, what they would do is just make them a higher level than everything else in the zone. Yep. And they did this with dungeon bosses too. This was such a dick-sucking move. This was literally such a dick-sucking move because it, hunters have no problem with that. They just, ah, you know, what do you mean? What do you mean high level? You just shoot them. It's easy. Just shoot. Just shoot. Meanwhile, if you're a warrior, you're you're hitting them, and because your fucking your your energy is based off of how much damage you're dealing, you're not dealing any fucking damage. You're just sitting there with your big two-handed weapon. Where's my fucking? Where's my tennis racket?
That's the miss. <laughs> and then you're fucking dead. That's the whole goddamn thing, man. I'm so sick of this shit, man. Like I, I, I was, I was happy whenever they changed that in, in, in retail. Honestly, I, I was happy whenever they just made them elites and shit, and not just high level, because it was so goddamn annoying. Full dead, yeah, exactly, full dead. Oh, we hit a hundred thousand viewers. Thank God. If you were doing a quest in the starting zone yep. and killing mobs level seven and eight for most of the quest, you finally get to the final one, yep. which has you kill one mob. And he's level twelve. And then when you get to it, you'll find out that it's level twelve and destroys you for being four levels higher than you. As See that? A level difference See that? makes it harder to hit and gives it crushing blows if the gap is big enough. Yep. Over time, Blizzard just completely so removed annoying. this mechanic from the game. And for good reasons. Making mobs harder by just making them a higher level was kind of unfair. Well, it was. It's completely unfair. There was unfair. no auto loot. You had to hold shift with each pickup in order to manually activate auto loot. That was so fun. And you had to loot each mob one at a time. That was so None fun. None of that AOE loot. Also, you couldn't see the sell price of an item unless you were at a vendor. So, if you completed a quest and got a reward that you didn't need, there wasn't really a way to know which item gave more gold. No. Outside of prior knowledge of which items sell for more, usually. You just buy, just if you don't know which one to get, you just download the add-on. And if you down, download the add-on, just get the weapon. If it's like a pair of boots or, or a weapon, just get the weapon every time it's going to sell for more. Or maybe an add-on. It was like, uh, generally, like the bigger the item would be or the heavier it would be in real life, the more it will vendor for. You just use that logic and you will be right in terms of picking the right quest rewards vendor nine times out of ten. Travel time was what you spent half your time doing. Flight points were very sparse, and it was rare yep. for towns to have one. It was entirely normal to have to run to every single Actually point true. in a questing zone without ever flying, as flying was usually reserved for going to other zones and major cities, not the conveniences of going from one quest hub to the other. Yep. Not like wow. Most now. quests were far apart from each other, and not many of them could be done side by side like today, where maybe three quests could be completed in the same area at the same time. So most of the time, you were traveling slowly to a questing spot to finish one, maybe two quests at the same time before running to a new place for a different quest. And then you have and to go back to the first place. Most classes were slow. Priests yeah, had absolutely up, yeah. no movement speed increases. Rogues had a sprint once every five minutes, and you didn't get the opportunity to get a mount until level 40, where most players couldn't even afford it on their first character for the high price. So it wasn't unusual for players just to run on foot, slowly, everywhere, to do everything, because yep. Vanilla WoW loved to have quests that made you go all over the place. The other yep. vast amounts of your time were spent on downtime. Downtime was the name of the game. Killing a few mobs, or one especially t That's what makes WoW such a great streaming game. Is I'm literally sitting around reading chat over half the time. I'm not even playing the game. I, I, I don't even play the game. That's the best part about it. It's not like, oh, I've got to worry about, you know, all this other bullshit. I don't even play the fucking game, dude. Uh, I'm just having fun. And, uh, yeah, th this is amazing. Uh, fuck yeah. All right, let's go. We're going to look at the rest of these. All right, I'll hopefully get be able to log back on now. What's going on? Why is WoW down? Uh, Blizzard and, uh, the, 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 listen, sometimes, you know how, like, there's, like, an eclipse? You know, like, an eclipse is where, like, the planets line up? Well, there's been an eclipse of, like, every fucking planet in the solar system today, and it's created an intergalactic dildo to fuck me in the ass. I'm old 59. 50 fucking 9. And I can't get this shit to work. 50 fucking 9. Huff mob would mean having to sit down and eat to get your health back, or bandage. First aid was very valuable for leveling, as most classes did not have self-heals, like they do today and you got the materials for bandages from killing humanoid mobs. Mana classes ran out of mana constantly and had to sit down to drink all the time as well. Out of combat regeneration is so high today that it's not a problem like yeah, at it doesn't all matter. until maybe max level mythic plus dungeons. 
Yeah, maybe. With all these hurdles to leveling and all the time spent running everywhere, it did make a few things more meaningful. The world felt bigger because you spent so much time on the ground having to slowly run everywhere. Also, reaching a new level felt more rewarding. Every two levels you got new abilities or ranks to train, and every single level after 10 gave a new talent point. So getting a new rank of one of your damaging moves could sometimes double its power, which gave a very drastic and fun power climb. Whereas killing a mob may have taken 30 seconds before, now it's 15. Now it only took 20 seconds. A new okay. talent every Not level meant good. slowly getting stronger and stronger, with the same periodic power climbs, as sometimes hitting a new row of talents could give you an ability to double your damage output. Because the baseline was so incredibly weak, the additions and power-ups you got along the way were much more noticeable. This also made class quests more meaningful. Most class quests in Vanilla WoW gave you either a much needed or crucial ability, like shaman totems and hunter and warlock pets, or gave a piece of gear guaranteed to be useful for your class, and were generally worth doing, as well as usually pretty difficult and annoying. Some Especially infamously annoying. so. Especially like the, the annoying Wander part. Totem quest chain, or the Druid Seal form quest. Oh wow! But having to work hard to get an ability or a good piece of gear did give a good feeling afterwards. Of course it did. So to sum things up, everything it took hit you hard. forever to fucking get Your it. Character was weak. Everything took forever to complete. Everything took forever to travel to. Everything took Level forever. Level up rewards were on point and felt genuinely rewarding. The low lows made the highs a lot more enjoyable. That's true. And I think that's why vanilla questing is remembered. With heirlooms, much better resource management, higher numbers at lower levels. Look how fast look, look how fast they kill the mobs, dude. Like this dude is like literally fucking level 20 and he's just auto attacking and killing everything that easily. It's actually insane to go from BFA leveling to classic leveling and then go back to to BFA leveling. It's like literally playing, it's like being level 40, but you have full tier three and you're dual wielding Ashbringers. That, that, that's how, power you, how powerful you feel. ...of getting new gear in general, the game has just evolved so far past the point of Vanilla WoW's harder leveling that it's basically an entirely different game. Quests nowadays are a lot more sane and reasonable more clumped up for ease of access, mounts can be obtained at level 1, and there's more ways to gain XP outside of just grinding mm. mobs and doing quests. I personally mm. think the game is better with all these changes, but is it- I don't think so. I don't think it's better. Because ultimately, like, what, 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 what is really better? How do you define better? In my mind, better means it's more enjoyable. And you have a, an experience that's good. It doesn't really matter about like, oh, is this objectively better? Yeah, any game designer is gonna tell you that yeah, BFA is better than retail, wow, or sorry, than classic, wow. But that doesn't make it better. Just because you see something that, you know, makes sense that it's better, doesn't mean that it's better. Like whenever you're, whenever you're trying to engage people's emotions, sometimes you have to think beyond logic really an argument of which is better when they're both so fundamentally different because the vanilla model is also enjoyable in its own way it is. and I kind of miss talent points and do ranks with leveling so what do you guys think is there even a comparison to make when they're both so fundamentally different I'm interested in other opinions on the matter All right. The reason Vanilla Barons, and to a lesser extent TBC and Wrath Barons, is remembered yep. so fondly by Horde players and was so popular was because of a combination of bad planning and yes. zone design by Blizzard. If you look at some of the earliest screenshots That's of WoW, true. you'll notice that almost all of it is Alliance zones and cities. Yep. And pretty much all Alliance zones were created... They focused on what mattered, is what they're saying. They focused on what mattered. There was like, ah, uh, you know, should we focus on the alliance or you know, like the horde? Like, well, we're obviously gonna focus on the alliance. She is hot. 
Like, is that just me? But I, I, I mean, she's hot. Before they worked on the Horde Zones, leading many yeah. people to speculate that Blizzard okay, just good. kind of ran out of time when it came to the Horde Zones. Yeah, of course and they did. And because of this... It's obvious. Maybe not. After all, there is no <laughs> it's obvious proof. But what is... Oh, it is, it is, there is proof. You know what the proof is? Go to Thunder Bluff, dude. It's literally a fucking hill. There's a series of hills. Like, all, all the hordes that say hills. It's like, oh, Orgrimmar? What is Orgrimmar? Uh, it's, uh, uh, just put some huts around. What do you want to put next to the huts? Uh, put another hut next to it. Yeah, duh. Yeah, it tails. No, right, listen. Horde zones are a fucking joke. Deniable that for a lot of various different reasons, yep. if you were Horde, you were going to end up in the Barrens eventually. You sure were. In vanilla, there was no dungeon finder, and the low-level dungeons themselves could take anywhere from one to four hours to complete, if you did manage to get a group together. So those were out of the question if you wanted an alternative to quick leveling. Battlegrounds did not start giving experience yep. until late in Wrath of the Lich King, Mining and herbalism really? didn't give experience either, and obviously pet battles weren't a thing back then. Really? That's, so all the wow. alternative routes that I thought they had an experience way earlier. Just weren't there. The only way to efficiently get I feel gaming. Thanks for 10 subs, man. Appreciate that. Thank quests. you, thank you. The Barrens was basically a funnel point for three of the four playable races in Horde. Yep. After their starting zone, Torin, Trolls, and Orcs were naturally left I went over there the as Barrens. undead, too. And even undead would travel there sometimes rather than deal with Silver Pine Forest or Terran Mill. It was fucking terrible. The zone itself was massive. Probably one of the biggest zones ever in the entire game. It also had only three flight paths and even less graveyards. Yep. One flight path in Ratchet, one at the crossroads, and a third at Camp Tarajo. The flight path from Ratchet to the crossroads Taja was Haro. an extremely That's what I used short to call flight. It. Taja but the Haro. one from the crossroads to Camp Tarajo was the most useful one. And even then, those three flight paths covered only a very small portion of the map. So you had to run everywhere. At that time, you didn't get a mount until level 40, and Old Barons was notorious for sending you to all the very far corners of the zone for questing. That was the worst, So you dude. were running marathons for everything. Actually the fucking worst, In addition, dude. it also had the largest level range of any zone, spanning 15 levels. So you pretty much had to go to the Barons. You stayed there for a long time, and you had to do very long, boring runs to get to quests. On top of some of the quests being infamous for being awful, Mancrick's wife being one, and probably the most known quest in WoW, the Venture Co. Samaflange quests, the terrible es That's actually a good question. What do you guys think is the most, the most known quest in WoW? Like, that everybody knows. Is it Hogger? Uh, I feel like it's probably Hogger, to kill Hogger. Uh, uh, Old Blanche? No, nobody gives a fuck about Old Blanche. Wrathgate? No, there's no way it's Wrathgate. Uh, okay, I'd say, like, Man Manric or Hogger. Stalvin? No, no, there's no way. Like, because, yeah, like, the thing is, like, literally anybody that plays WoW would probably know about fucking Hogger. Uh, let's see, Stolen Silver? No, no, yeah, it, it's Hogger. 100% Hogger. Squirt Quest, Free from the Hold. Yep. and collecting four zebra hooves with a very low drop chance and various other similar low drop chance gathering quests. The Zebra, a quest that required you to do one simple little task. The Zebra. Go out zebra into the hoose. barrens and kill Zebra for four hooves. Not so bad, right? I mean, each Zebra has hoose. four hooves, don't they? No, they don't. Well, actually, they don't have any. No, because this quest, if you focused on it and only it, would take you about an hour to complete. Imagine that. Literally one hour. You spend one hour in the game to get four zebra hooves. That after all of that time, you come back and you turn it in. And you know what you get? A pair of white leggings that have less stamina. Or sorry, they have no stats and less armor than what you already had. It, it, it's great. Absolutely amazing. The problem with the quest was twofold. One, there were not a lot of zebras, and they liked to roam alone. And two, they had a really low chance to drop the hoops. 
So you had to go around and hunt down these little bastards, and then hope the RNG gods were on your side when you finally found one. Lost in battle. One of the most infamous quests ever. The objective was simple. Yep. Find out what happened to Mancrick's wife. Only, this was in the time before there was a vast, readily available database. Nobody knew where the fuck it was. So in order to find I his never wife, completed this. you'd have to dig through I never pages did. of comments and message boards or forums, since her body was not in an obvious location. Yep. Mancrick gave you the quest here, and his wife's body is over here. Just right. randomly to the side of the road, not near any other quests, and very far away from Mancrick. The easiest way to find out where Mancrick's wife was was to simply ask in chat. And Barrens being the most populated zone in those days, you yep. had plenty of people more than willing to help you locate Mancrick's wife. Yep. But after the question has been asked for maybe the tenth time in the past thirty minutes, people would start giving not so serious answers, which would yep. then devolve into more off topic discussions most of which involving various links to certain legendary weapons Donald Trump and the tales and exploits of one known as Chuck Norris and and, and more importantly Donald Barons Trump chat. all about him now if Barron's isn't remembered for its terrible questing experience because really I could go on and on about some of the other really terrible quests in the zone the Barron's chat is what Trey chat started out as yep Random trolling, anal theory, blessed blade of the wind seeker dumbass motherfuckers and other various is what he's saying memes. Dumbass and since motherfuckers. so many Horde players spent so long in this one zone, running very slowly all over the place because it was massive yep. and only had two relevant flight points, you had a lot of free time to Shit, chat while man. auto running to the crossroads. Look at the fucking gun next to the zebra. Oh no. LFG, your mom. Where's Azeroth? That's. Jesus Christ. And that is why Barons is remembered for wow. Barons Chat. And it's incredible leveling experience. Oh, and also Alliance Raids. The yeah, Baron's chat too. might have been full of memes and childish trolling, but it was also full of the crossroads is under attack. Yep. Since it seemed like the crossroads were We did that shit too. That was really fucking attack. fun, man. That was so, so why fucking were the crossroads fun. crossroads always under attack? Well, for a number of reasons. They only had level 40 for guards. For one, the Alliance knew that there were a lot of Horde players in the Barons. Yep. And not only that but low-level horde players. The barons also had a very crucial geographical flaw that alliance zones of similar level did not have. Ratchet. This little city was neutral, had a boat to the eastern kingdoms, and a very short run to the crossroads, which was nearby. The crossroads is also where a majority of the quest givers were located, so just simply taking the easy and convenient boat to Ratchet and running leisurely into the crossroads and pulling the guards one by one, since at this time guards did not all Zerg attackers like they do today, a small group of max level alliance players could hold the crossroads hostage for quite some time. You guys remember whenever we did this shit? And, and then we just basically completely took over? And, and then we, we had to leave because it was honestly getting sad. It was honestly getting fucking sad. That the horde just couldn't, they couldn't get anybody over there. It was just pathetic. And so they eventually, like, they had to stop playing. And uh, we just had to go over to Orgrimmar or something like that. It was just so fucking embarrassing, man. And why not? It was easy to do. And you were almost guaranteed to get a few lobby trolls, orcs, or torrens try and fight you because they didn't know any better. So it was easy pickings. Until the max level horde players came in to clean house. The crossroads was a site of constant world PvP. Depending on your server, there could be a couple of small-scale battles taking place every day. The only reason the Barrens isn't more well-known for its world PvP is because it's it already contested. infamous for a whole host of other things. That this well, because uh, what the Barrens wasn't contested, was it? Like I'm like 90% sure it wasn't contested. So of course they're not gonna have like, oh yeah, the, the I remember the Barrens PvP. Yeah, it wasn't contested. Of course, there's not gonna be a lot of PvP there. Like, here's where PvP happens, it's fucking, like, South Shore and Terran Mill, uh, in front of, like, let me think, where else is there? There's that, that's the number one place, STV, yeah, STV is probably the main place that there's a, a lot of fucking PvP. And then maybe a little bit beyond that, like, maybe, like, Western Plaguelands or something, like, high levels, because people are, like, competing for, like, grinding spots. Aspect of it, kind of gets overshadowed. Yeah. And don't get me started on the landscape. The landscape of the zone. 
It's alright, actually. Landscapes are a very subjective thing to discuss, and many people have fond memories of the barren wasteland that they spent weeks, maybe even months, leveling through. Personally, I was never the biggest fan of the zone's aesthetics, but it could look very cool at times. In Cataclysm, with the remake of the Old World, the Barrens was cut in half and turned into two leveling zones. And each zone is about the same size as other regular size zones, which should tell you something about just how huge the Old Barrens was. If splitting it in half made each new zone only normal sized. Okay. And with the splitting of the zone, most of the old qualities of vanilla barons are gone. You no longer- I never liked that. Like, Blizzard totally fucked up by letting that this shit happen before they had the technology to have the two separate zones at the same time. They totally fucked up by not doing that. You no need to stay in any zone for very long with all the alternative ways to level. And with Dungeon Finder being available at level 15, most players totally skip it altogether. So Baron's chat isn't even a thing anymore. Blizzard fixed pretty much all the old quests to no longer be absolutely terrible. So no more spending an hour killing zebras for four hoofs. And guards in low-level towns are actually a threat now. So it's not as easy to take the crossroads as it once was. So world PvP is almost non-existent there anymore. With Blizzard making changes to the zone to fix its many problems, they got rid of what made it unique. Yep. But that's not always a bad thing. Sure, we'll never have the old barons again, because most of the things that made it such a heavily traveled zone were because of bad zone design. So would you even want that again? Is it better to have a good zone that's kind of forgettable that hardly anyone goes to? Or a bad zone that everyone's forced to go to? Because that's what old barons was. It's better to have a bad zone that everybody is forced to go to. That's what it is. Uh, that, that's honestly the truth. Is it so much better to have a shit-ass zone, a shit-ass garbage zone, that everybody fucking has to do it? Like Timeless Isle. Was Timeless Isle really that great? Timeless Isle was good. But you know what fucking sucked? Is the layout, not being able to fly, getting killed by people with the sensor on constantly, and everybody fucking remembers it because everybody was there. And you were sitting there with everybody else and you had to deal with it. And that kind of shit was what mattered. 